guess we're ready to start. I'm going to show you how to make the diagram that I made for the example paper in case you feel like it. It's not terribly difficult. Um, you can always do some combination of that diagram and then print it and draw all over it and then scan that or something. Anyway, it could be helpful to some people. Let me look in um, the folder that I've been using. <coughs> I have this arc assign file that's just a text file that has some commands that I wrote out and then this is just the R data file that I've been using for this class. So I can just do that. That'll open up R. And then this arc assign thing, I'm going to edit with Notepad++, which is one of my favorite little text editors. I could use RStudio, but that uh, we haven't used that much in this class. So these are the commands I've used. I've put some little comments up here to try and... Well, no. I didn't use the ttable function. Fake t distribution using zgraph function. So I'm going to use this zgraph function to make a, a z distribution and, and I'm just going to pretend like it's a t distribution. They look close enough that for a diagram it doesn't matter. Now to be clear, you do not need to use a computer at all to make your diagram. You can draw it by hand as long as it's fairly neat, as long as the words are legible, as long as the numbers can be read. It would be nice if you used rulers for the straight lines, but the curve can be drawn by hand, freehand, whatever. Um, I just need the right numbers and in the right arrangement. So T observed needs to be in the rejection region if you reject the null hypothesis and not in it if you don't, etc. Uh, alpha needs to be shaded in. Just look at the assignment. So I'm going to use this zgraph function. Now this zgraph function, I've updated it to have this argument that says numbers equals false. So I can make a graph and what if I say numbers equals false, that means don't show me any numbers on the graph. So I can pretend like it's a T distribution. So I'm just making a fake T by using Z. So let's go to le web and I'll get that distribution. DarrenLRogers.com slash static slash r is where my functions live. And you can see when you get a directory like this, your web browser will say, oh, I'll just show you the directory. I'll just show you what files are there. And zgraph.r is there. I click on that. The web browser doesn't know how to display that, so it just displays the contents. It's not an HTML file or anything fun like that. But I can just do control A and I can copy the whole thing. And then I can go here and I can paste the whole thing and now I have the zgraph function in R. So I can enter this here. zgraph, and the first number is the value I want to be my cutoff. Th I'm just going to set up zgraph. I want a positive 1.645, because in a z distribution, that cuts off 5%. Not in a t distribution, but like I said, I'm faking. I'm using a, a fake t distribution. I'm pretending like z is t, and then I'm just getting rid of all the numbers that are the evidence. <laughs> so I'm doing this totally fake. And the mean of this distribu distribution is 0, the standard deviation is 1, so it'll look like a regular distribution. Numbers equals false. Oh, there we go. So now I've got this nice little graph here. Now, I can use this function called lines. And lines wants two values, really. It wants x and y. It wants x and y where the line starts from, and x and y where the line ends. I want a line at positive 1.79. So the first argument is the x values, both of them, and you have to bundle them together with the c command. And then the next value is the y values, and you need to bundle those together. So the, fir so the line's beginning point is 1.79, x of 1.79, y of 0. So if this is the middle right here, um, x, we know that this is x of 1.65, 1.79 will be over here somewhere and 0. That's the point it starts from, and we want to go to 1.79 and something up there. So I figured out that 0 0.2 works pretty well. This graph, the way it's worked out, you get 0 here and you have 1 at the very top. So that's the coordinate system. And then 0 is in the middle here and positive values here and negative values for the x-coordinate system. So it goes from 1.79, which is 1.79 over to the right of y, and 0, no height at all, bottom of the y, to 1.79, which is the same distance to the right, and 0.2, so one-fifth of the way up, 20% of the way up. Now, LWD2 is something else you can add. So if I don't do that, then um, I'll just show you what happens. That, I'm just going to paste that into R, and I'm going to close the parentheses there. See, it just makes a regular black line. Nothing really exciting going on there. Uh, I should make this a little shorter so we can see the R window and my text window and everything all at once. Let's let's do this. Let's put the R window down here. Well, it doesn't have to be 
be very wide, this doesn't have to be very wide, and this thing can be bigger. Now with our graphics you can just keep adding little things. Now notice I got area equals 0.05, that's going to be alpha. So um, I entered this down here, uh, lines equals blah blah blah. So what if I do that, but instead of ending, I do, I add in LWD, it means line width, LWD equals 2. It'll draw a new line, but now line width of 2, so now it's thicker. That's why I did that line width. Now what if I add color, which is indicated as COL equals, and blue is a standard R color if you put it in quotation marks. There we go. So now we have a blue line. That's where T observed is going to be. Then I need a function called text, and it does the same thing. You need to tell it an X and a Y location. I want it to be located at X, and I fooled around. I, I wanted it to be a little higher than 0.2, because that's where this line ends right here. I want it to be a little higher. So I fooled around and figured out how the 0.225 works. And you can just fool around until you get this right. When you get it right, then rerun everything to make a clean graph. Um, and then you have to tell it what should be written. So I said labels. That's the. You don't really need labels. You can delete that. And this backslash n means make a new line. I'm being a little fancy here. And then I'm going to say the color of this text should be blue. And CEX is character expansion. And I figured out it looks nice if you make it 1.5 times the size that it's supposed to be. So I could show you how to do this. You could do text 1.79, 0.225. Um, t, ob t observed equals 1.79. If I do that, there we go. That actually looks just fine. I don't know why I need it to be so, so fancy. But if I put a backslash n, then that makes like a line break. And that puts that on top of it. See how it just adds the junk together? And then if I add color equals blue and CEX equals 1.5, that'll make the text different color and larger. So then that's crazy. Well, that's crazy, so we can just go back here, copy the whole thing, and just start over. There. So that looks pretty nice now, I think. Um, I wanted to have a little label. There's M text, which puts text in the margins, in other words, like the outside areas, like below the axis and to the left of the axis. We have M text, and you enter the words and then you enter which side, one means bottom, you adjustment, zero means left and one means right and 0 0.5 means middle, and line one means one line from the axis, one line this way and this way, and then color equals blue. So anyway, I, I put this in here and it adds distribution of mean differences, partial irrigation minus full irrigation. Hey, how did I mess that up? I forgot to put the parentheses in there. So let's try that again. There. It redrew it, so you can see it's actually a little dark and junky there, just so I could get the final par parentheses that I've missed. And now I'm going to do the same thing with M text to get the null hypothesis mean. I'm going to do lines from 0, 0 to 0, 0 0.7. I'm going to make that thick, and I'm going to color it this color that R recognizes called dark red. So I'm going to do that and put a line right in the middle. And then I'm going to use the M text again, and I'm going to say mu dash zero, because I haven't figured out an easy way to say mu sub zero. So, or put in a mu. There are ways to do it, but it gets kind of complicated. And again, side is one, the lowest, or below. Side one means down here, and two is over here, and three is here, and four is here. It's a little arcane and bizarre. You always, I always have to Google this, because I don't have this in my head. An ADJ adjustment, like that just means a left-right adjustment. They could have come up with a better name. It's 0 0.5, so in the middle. And line equals 0, so it's 0 lines from here, so it's right below this line. And color dark red, so I'm going to paste that here. There we go. So now we have mu0 equals 0, so the null hypothesis mean is what I was meaning by mu0 equals 0. And so that's a nice diagram. So I'm going to say copy to the clipboard as a meta file. Now I want to I want to size this window just the way I want before I do this. Maybe make it like about like this. So file copy the clipboard as a meta file. A meta file is a kind of file that Windows loves. So it should paste in nicely. Uh, and so then I go to my Word document and put my cursor where I want, and I do. 
Le paste. There we go. We have a beautiful diagram. The end.